many, many reasons. Uh, before I start talking about why, I want to thank the Hoboken Library for allowing us to have these hybrid classes. Uh, Art at Home is now accessible to anyone who wants to attend and be creative either here in person at the library or from the comfort of their home or studio. So the Hoboken Library is extraordinary in allowing us to do this either remotely or in person. Thank you so much. I want to also welcome our librarian, Natalie, today, who is filling in front for Laura, who is away, and we really appreciate her technical assistance today. We have a new student, so delighted that she's here. And a reminder to everyone that anyone can learn something, I hope, from this class. It doesn't matter what your skill levels are, whether you're a veteran artist or you're just starting on the art pathway, I think that you'll find something to do and enjoy in the art at home or art with Liz, it's called now, forgive me, art with Liz classes. So why is March my favorite month of the year? Primarily because in the United States and probably for most of the world now, around the world now, it is Women's History Month. This is the month in which we celebrate the accomplishments of women within the borders of this country for what they've achieved in all walks of life. And in this class, we're gonna celebrate the artists, the visual artists who accomplished so much and have added so much to the culture of our country. Our first artist is a woman named Xaviera Simmons. Xaviera is a force unto herself. She is an American contemporary artist and I'm going to put up a picture of her work while I talk briefly about her life. Not, I thought stuff was open, but it isn't. So give me one minute, everybody. Best laid plans. Let's put this one up first. I'm opening up an image to share. Everybody able to see this at home? It's a little blurry because it's digitized, even for folks here, so I apologize. It is a figure of a woman. I'm making it a little smaller so it's easier to see. It's a figure of a woman with a mask up to her face. And then this is a picture of workers in the field. It's an agricultural field. So Xaviera Simmons is an American artist. She works in photography, performance, painting, video, sound art, sculpture, and installation. She's 48. She grew up in New York between Harlem and her grandmother's house in Queens. And I love this statement about her. Quote, she was raised by an intergenerational community of women. Her mother, aunts, and cousins who modeled care and mutual aid long before they became buzzwords. Her childhood was also defined by a duality between the cacophony of 125th Street, which back then was a stretch of Harlem, which resembled a sprawling Pan-African open market, and the quiet of her grandmother's bountiful garden teeming with flowers and produce. 
So all of this stuff from her formative years, the quiet of her grandmother's garden, the noisy environment of the streets, shows up visually in her work. Her work has been exhibited nationally and internationally. It's been shown at MoMA, MoMA PS1, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, the Studio Museum in Harlem. The list is extremely long. She received her Bachelor of Fine Arts from Bard College in 2004, where she studied with Larry Fink, Mitch Epstein, and a person she attributes a lot of influence to, Stephen Shore. She completed the Whitney Museum of American Arts Independent Study Program and Studio Art in 2005. What I would like to do next, and I've never done it before in this class, I've shown short video clips of artists being interviewed, but I have a 15 minute interview of Ms. Simmons talking about her work. I would like to show it. Any objections? No, okay, so. I believe this is one of the most powerful ways to teach folks about what an artist does. What an artist says about their work, obviously, is more informative than anything I could tell you. And because Ms. Simmons is such a new cutting edge person, we're lucky to be able to hear her talk about her work directly. After we listen to the video, I'm going to tell you what our art project is for today, and then we can start doing our own creative process. Does anybody want to talk about this picture first, though, before I put the video on? Um, this is, I believe, a painting and a collage. So she works with photography, the photograph of the woman. Xaviera herself made. And this is a real African mask that the woman is holding. But this is a photograph that came from the collection of, I believe, the museum where she was showing this piece. And then the backdrop that the woman is photographed against. I'm not sure if she created the floral backdrop or if it was something that she found and chose to use. I love the patterning in her dress and the background, I find very beautiful. And there's a lot of meaning in the imagery that she chooses. And you're going to learn more about that in the video that I'm about to share. But any comments about this particular piece before I start the video? At home or in person? I no. think uh, color-wise, it's very um, appealing. Yeah. All right. It has a lot of movement between the background, the eye kind of goes circular. Awesome. I love the way she superimposed this photograph. And you can't really see from the image I have projected. It's behind a piece of plexi. So in a way, it's isolated from the larger image, and yet it really fits into the larger image. So that's an interesting thing that she's successfully created. It's not something that ordinarily I would think would work, but somehow she's made it work. Maybe because the plexi is transparent and you can see through it. Maybe that's what helps to work the photograph into the overall image. But it's kind of cool. All right, let's watch the video. Hopefully I can get it to work.
Oh, it's already started. People at home, you can see and hear. Thank you. No, I, I can't hear it. It's coming. Photography has always been a witness since it's been in its. This is Ms. Simmons, Xaviera Simmons. Has continually allowed for the destruction of the potential of the human. So how can I use photography to go against the witness? With the proliferation of image making that we have right now, um, photography actually could be something that's part of a revelatory reparative mechanism if we so chose to use it, and especially those with the wealth and power to do so. And so I think about those things a lot. And I think with this exhibition, I'm thinking a lot about those things, you know, how the witness can actually be the reparator. My name is Savannah Wood. I am the executive director of Afro Charities. And Afro Charities is a nonprofit organization that partners with the 130 year old Afro American newspapers that was founded in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, the newspaper is my family's paper, it was founded in 1892. And my family came to own the paper starting in 1897. And so since then, somebody in my family has operated and owned that newspaper. So what we're doing with the um, with Afro Charities is really try to bring this archive to life. So there's more than 130 years that are documented within the collection. There's three million photographs. There's lots of letters and audio recordings and all of these other things that really document world history from a Black American perspective. Um, and so we're trying to bring that to the public through preservation of the materials through educational programs and artistic programs like this, um, this work with CAS. Um, you know, some artists are really particular about scholarship and want to know every single detail about how um, an image was made or where something was recorded or what are all of the details that led to this letter being written. And others are more interested in the aesthetics of what the object looks like and how the object interacts with other materials. And so I think there's just a really wide range of how people can enter the archive and enter this history and bring it into the present. So it's really kind of exciting to see this, how these different brains will interpret the, the raw material that's there. We're constantly rearranging objects, looking at objects, trying to figure out what is going to click inside of us to make us fully human beings in the way that we would desire to be human beings. And I think that archival research, collections, other people's things, dead people's things, I think help us trace a line of what a human being could be, but I think that we, at this present moment, haven't fully developed that enough. I know that there's a quest in all of our archival impulse to kind of better understand the trajectory of human beings through the objects, images, uh, textiles, textures that they collect. I remember seeing her work at the studio museum and just being really inspired by the way that she was playing with different objects and histories to talk about a really specific Black American experience of, um, you know, that's often framed by kind of like a disconnection from history, um, from knowing your own history for, you know, reasons that are very specific to the American context of uh, racialized terror. And so it was interesting to see how she was reclaiming aspects of her own history and inventing new aspects of that as well, creating archives within the works um, that were presented at the Studio Museum all those years ago. 
So when we landed on um, and asking Liberia and inviting her to do this, I was really excited about that possibility. So it's great all of this time now to see um, to see her work inspired by the archives, and she's often engaged with archival materials. So it makes sense that she would be um, using this collection in her work. It's just an honor, and you know what I mean? It really is a profound honor for someone to ask you to take stock of their family's history. And it's rare in the United States to have a family be that intact, especially of a, a Black American family who descends from slavery. In the United States, Black Americans account for 14% of the population. So that means that maybe, I would imagine maybe a few thousand people have been able to sustain a family history and a family line because white people have like terrorized people out of their possessions and their homes and their land and their money and their newspapers and their salons and everything. So we did those things as a group, but we didn't get to keep those things. I come from the photographers who made works in the dark room. I used to have a small um, dark room in my studio apartment and I lived with chemicals. I work with large format cameras that are film based. You know, I try to get as close to like the beginnings of when I learned how to make photographs. So there's that. And then there's also always a conversation with sculpture because when you when you use a body, you are thinking sculpturally. So how do you do those things as well? And then there's an art historical language that I'm always trying to work with. So there's there's that, and then there's the witness, and then there's the cultural aspects of the whole entire affair. And then obviously, because I'm American, I'm situated in the American vernacular landscape. Sometimes I'm deeply excited about the work, and sometimes I'm deeply frustrated because I want the work to actually rupture a psyche and turn even you all into better humans. But that's not necessarily happening. And I don't know that art can do that thing. I took this project like extra seriously. I was extra aware of Savannah's family's involvement, Savannah herself, Savannah's desire to have me, an artist, interpret, think about, contemplate her family the images, the history of the newspaper, the history of Baltimore. So it's a very like emotional project because it is the breath of especially the Black American existence, which is also the breath of the American experience in general, you know, in all of its complexity. So one of my favorite images in Xiveria's new body of work um, is the one that has the Liberty ship with Harriet Tubman's name on it. And she's holding uh, what appears to be a mask, but also has the shape of like a bird. Um, and so, or a, a relative character within the photograph is holding this. Um, so there's a lot of constructions that are happening within the image. Um, and I think all of the work in this series is really talking about sort of a construction of history. Um, and a construction of images and thinking about how history is made through images and through the ways that we see things. So I think that's a big part of how she's viewing her work. But I like this image so much in particular, for one, because Harriet Tubman is like a personal hero of mine. She's also a daughter of Maryland. So going back to Baltimore, Maryland, there's a deep connection there. Um, and, you know, she's known for freeing herself from slavery and going back several times to free other people from slavery, which is like taking a huge risk um, for her own personal safety, her own life, and the lives of those people who she's um, rescuing from slavery, essentially. There's also um, this boat, which is a warship made by the United States, you know? And so Harry Tubman was also a spy during the Civil War in the United States and never really got her due during her lifetime. 
But it's interesting to think about the United States acknowledging her in this way that's meant to be an honor in her death, but still in a time period where there are, you know, there's deep segregation in the United States, there's still deep inequality in the United States. So this sort of empty gesture by a, a world empire towards this enslaved Black woman who had to, you know, there's just so many levels of um, sort of hypocrisy that really exposes what America is just in that small part of the image. And then we have this mask that's I hear or that's up here his character is holding that is a bird. And so with the bird, you're thinking of migration, you're thinking of movement. And anytime I see a ship, I'm thinking of again migration and movement, but also in the context of um, Black America and the Black Atlantic, thinking about slavery, thinking about you know this movement from Africa to the United States that was um, an initial rupture. And then for this, this ship to be headed back across the Atlantic with the Cummins name on it, there's all of these poetics of like of return and movement that I think are really interesting and rich in that particular image. Um, I've made probably, I don't know, 150, 200 images, um, of which we are showing 15. One of my favorite images which is not on view is an image, it's a fashion photograph actually of a woman in a bikini or in a bathing suit. I think everything about it was like in a way the opposite of the weight that I've been working with, which is like, you know, it was kind of carefree. It was kind of like a gorgeous shape. It was kind of beautiful hair texture. It was beautiful, you know what I mean? It's a gorgeous, photograph to to think about and and also like personal to me in a way because my grandmother was a fashion model so I think a lot about that character in relationship to my own family line oh uh, and I'm not <laughs> advocating for violence at all but I love there's an image um that is in this exhibition that has a group of black men loading guns and of course black men in the United States carrying guns at all is always a controversial thing now, even though the United States prides itself on the right to bear arms. And I think there are probably almost as many guns as there are people in the United States. So it's interesting to see that image, you know, because that's an image that doesn't really have the freedom inside of the country um, for that image to exist, really. There is a video in the front that's an animated work. When I can't actually make any other thing, I go to animation. Like, I can't make an image of a boulder killing someone or rolling over a body and flattening it, but I can animate that and I can have you contemplate what that character is about or doing rigorous work. I can't actually physically have that happen in like real time. So I have to go to I'm very intentional about what goes where. And it takes time to think about what characters need to come. What era am I talking about? You know, what what landscape or not, what material or not, you know? I mean, it's a very slow, methodical way of working. Does your acting as a lady Canada studio influence or help in any way your practice as you embody character in your papers? I mean, <laughs> Who said this? Stanislavski or something? Like an actor prepares, right? I think it's the cheesiest thing because it's been said so many times, but it's true. Like this film crew came prepared, right? With their light and their cameras. It's the same. It's the same. We we prepare. And I think a a, a good actor probably prepares and is able to emotionally respond to the preparation that they, the conditions in which they're either entering or emotionally respond to the 
circumstances that they find themselves in. All right, well, we really got to see deeply inside of Ms. Simmons <laughs> Thought process. Talk about 16 voting. The chemistry. What is the name for the I, Hold on a minute, the everyone. Stage. I thought I had. Okay, bonus for Osmond. Age of exploration. Magellan. There we go. All right, forgive me, everyone. <laughs> That was a little spooky, right? And um, so she really, I was impressed with how open and I think vulnerable Ms. Simmons was about talking about her inner process and how she thinks about and does her work. I want to make one correction before we share our thoughts about uh, her work in the video. And that is the image that I showed before I said was a collage. I think that what her images are, and I've never seen them in person, I think she stages the figure holding the photograph and then takes a photograph of the entire staging and then prints a life-size photograph that she then frames. So they were not mixed media collages as I initially stated. And I, I don't know. What do people think about her work? Love it. Why? This is Jen, well, for those I, of you who can't see. The about the interview was that really understood what she was saying. And it just made it more beautiful. About the Harry Tubman boat, with the bird. It was really beautiful. beautiful so... Correct me if I'm wrong. Once you understood the symbolism and the intention of her symbolic choices, you found her work even more beautiful. Any other thoughts? Whether aesthetically or emotionally or anybody not like her work? Okay. Can you explain why? Okay. All right. This is the beauty of art. People can sometimes not like what they're looking at. What didn't he like? Right. Yep. Well, it's too far away from him. And she talks about like how she holds a lot of weight when she creates those pieces. She sounds a little lighter. So I think maybe in her compositions and the way she works as an artist, she probably doesn't want such a heavy, like, she doesn't want it to be so literal or so heavy feeling because she's already feeling. Okay. So that's okay. Okay. The way why she. I thought that was a very interesting comment too. So. Some of the response now has been that people are not feeling moved by the imagery, and some people are commenting on the fact that, which Xaviera herself commented on, was that some of the work is very heavy. Um, Interesting, because I thought it was very moving, and uh, each okay. image it is able to show the current person looking back and maybe not even knowing their history and where they come from, but a way to combine that history into an image that's also beautiful. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay. Now, did I interpret what you said correctly? What? It just didn't move me. It didn't move you personally. Okay. All right, so 
I love when there's different reactions to the work. Here's what we're gonna do today. Um, although, can I just say one more thing about my personal reaction? I really love the Harriet Tubman piece. Um, that really spoke to me, particularly the migration part of the piece. I thought it was very, very, very powerful. And I think that Xavier really achieved something with the imagery of the mask. So that was my uh, personal takeaway. I have to say, there's a lot that she has borrowed from an artist that we've talked about before. Everybody remember Kehinde Wiley, that kind of large monumental portraiture with the flowered background that Wiley does. And I'm wondering if she spent some time studying with him, although I couldn't find any information about that uh, in the biographical stuff that I found about her. So, okay. Um, what we're gonna do today, I, those of you who received my emails, you know already, we're gonna again do collage work. I brought in some of the materials that we had here last week. So those of you who are here in person, you have many uh, printed images to work with. Those of you at home, I hope you've gathered up old magazines, et cetera, to use. Family photos are great, although I would recommend photocopying them first before you cut them up. And I'm gonna give you a theme today though. This is a little bit different from in the past. Because it's Women's History Month, I would like you to think either of your own self, if you identify as female, and think about an image that you can create that somehow represents an aspect of you that you want to share. Or if, I guess if you identify as male, you can think of a feminine part of your character that you would like to convey. Or think of a woman who has been a major influence on your life, whether it is a historical figure like Ms. Simmons uh, used Harriet Tubman as an inspiration, or it could be your mother, it could be your sister, it could be your best friend, it could be your niece or your daughter, if you're lucky enough to have one, et cetera. And create a collage using that theme. Now, here are some tips to keep in mind. Collage is tricky because you have a lot to work with. You might want to focus either on shape or color to help you bring your composition together and make it work well. Or you could think about form. Choose something that's going to help you unify the different images that you cut out. Do not glue things down until you figure out where they go on the page. And I think that's basically it. So we're good to go. Have Question. fun. Any questions? Sorry. Any questions? Yes. Go ahead. So what kind of paper do you use to glue things on? Like, does it have to be like a board or? It is entirely up to you, whatever you have available to you. If you are planning to glue a lot of images down, I would recommend a heavier weight base. Like if you have a lot of boxes, you could cut up some cardboard from a box. If you're just using thin newsprint, then any kind of drawing paper as your base or construction paper would be fine. Good question, Lizzie. Any other questions? Eileen. I just realized something as we finished talking about artists and Harriet Tubman. Do you know there's a park in Sherman City that was dedicated to Harriet Tubman? I did not know that. I know there's one in Newark. There's one in Jersey City as well. They have the studio tour in Jersey City. And you see 
Peter they had a tour of all the murals in Jersey City. And there's, I have a picture of the mural. It's a, the mural Use it in your collage. I just want to all know it's, it's gorgeous. It's just Thank you for sharing. Do you have the address? It's a, it's a park in the, like, uh, in the Bergen Lafayette area. Okay. Natalie, could you put that in the chat? Thank you so much. Yeah, pass it around, Eileen. Great. All right, let's go to work. And folks at home, as always, if you're running into difficulties, let me know. You can call out. You can put questions in the chat. You can uh, ask to share at any time so I can give you advice. And folks here, I'm going to wander around the room to give you assistance. Let's go to work. Oh, these are here in, in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, this is a perfect starting point. Yeah, I mean, somewhere. Oh, I'm not sure. But, uh, Oh, I was sitting through a 15 minute video. It was awesome. It in, oh, yeah. But she was ready to go. She right. But that's the best answer to the pedagogical question I ever, ever heard. I was sitting through a 15 minute video. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That was still a It's a cat. Thank you, Mark. I think in the spring that you are on, and uh, yeah. I feel a lot of the A teacher cat. Mark, I want to say that. Okay. Yeah, I want to sign Oh, it's just, we, we have a, we have plastic ones. I Every class is going to be different. I can ask you. I can ask you. I can ask you. I can ask Oh, this is your transfer. Yeah, I need it. No, it's not close to the time. This is a little bit. Yes, I can't do it. The cheek for sure. Look at the picture. Yeah. Not your yeah, yeah, no. picture. But don't draw on this. This is the mm -hmm. This comes out mm -hmm. and then goes to the camera. Right. Yeah. 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 Ye
a month session on healing remember those Ooh. healing classes we used to do and i did an artist yeah, meditation yeah. class it was through the city through the green nice. team that sounds nice hey i did a two-hour session on dryness meditation oh i love that We had a lot of fun there. I actually had an elderly man cry. It was so moving for him. Yeah. He had just lost his wife. I think. Yeah. Anything happened 
in the world, in our family, we were on the phone. It's so funny to me that in the last five years, my husband said to me, this is not too long ago, but I've watched you do things that never would have happened. Shall I maybe take a pair of scissors? Yeah. A pair of scissors. Pair of scissors. Pair of scissors. Yeah. And then I actually brought this plate and said, take what you're doing. You don't really need this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some people prefer to find but yeah. I like Mod Podge at the end. Yeah, you can put it right over the top. Yeah. Do you think her word is just the yellow? You know what? It's a backdrop. She's so cute. Like I saw the image in the back. I thought those were pink. I mean, the one that was pink. That first artist was about to buy the whole thing. So then. You know, they did a rescue of his own work. She's so messy. She was like, No, sorry. I hate it. It's painful. I'm a little, I'm a little back and forth, and I would have said he does the portrait. Does the portrait, and he has a sister. Yeah. To do the back. Well, the background. That's okay. Okay. Yes, that makes that that does make it better for me too. But I, um, a lot of artists say he didn't help us. Just a potato. I don't know how pretty it works. Like, no, the, whole, the whole way she spoke, too, like the way she presented her. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like it. But I it do wish it was a collage. I do wish it was true. Yeah. I'm guessing that's what I was. It's something I was looking for in the effect. But see, this is conceptual. I mean, she's really like an artist with mind, I think, more than this individual. I do think that it might be a little flawed because I, I saw in one of them that like there was three of the same background in the same like wall mm -hmm. and they were like exactly the same. So either it's like a thread that he works with yeah. or it is a flaw and then the photography of that person is another flaw pulling whatever off it. And then, and then she takes and then a the photograph layer. of yeah. the flaw. Yeah. So so layer. Was, like, that's what I think. Yeah. That's her breath. Yeah. More. Yeah, I I think yeah. Or it's a stage. You know, she's yeah. stage is photograph. But there's Some another artist, Cindy Sherman, who also does that kind of stage and thing where she dresses up as different characters and then takes these self portraits. We've talked about Cindy Sherman. Anybody remember when we talked about her? I have them. A real life. Oh, God. I have the book, the catalog from one of her shows at MoMA. That alone was a truckload of money. I'm impressed. All right, folks at home, you doing good? Anybody want to share? Are you having problems or are we? It's too much in the beginning. I chose um, Xaviera for the first artist because she's somebody new and up and coming. But we will have all different kinds of female artists in the weeks to come. Damn, Margo, this is filler, right? You make it with butter. Just two tablespoons of butter that I can just keep it from I forgot I shouldn't be doing this.
filler, but thank you. There's um a big day coming up in in March, Margo. Just saying, you could make more fudge for the big day coming up in March. My daughter in law is going to start a pop up in the clothing room. You should talk to her. That's just a lot of it. just keeps everybody that Marvel's doing today. Did you thank her? Yes, I know. I'm distorting. You wouldn't see all these. Don't have Margo make jewelry. Check it out. This came from you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. It's from your I love these. Mm -hmm. Well, I would even work on these. I would go in with this. But yeah, that's okay. <laughs> that's so funny. I look at the whole skull face. Did you ever talk to students in mind? <laughs> <laughs> so really? That's fun. I don't know what that is. But... <laughs> uh, I did a whole collage. It's this person. We can't see her at the moment. Okay. Well, I think you sat next to her in class. I really love these curvy shapes. The question Do you need this book? I would, but it's up to you. You don't have to. Are you sure you want to talk about it? Is that how? Then you want one of these. I love that. Big brother. Is that big brother? Yeah. The powers of me.
that was like my Really, I like the way you've begun this. I like it. How much time do we have left? Oh, we have a lot of time. This is cool. <laughs> Oh, that's good news. Somebody like Romeo Beard in studio, yeah, Kyle's picture, Kyle everywhere. Oh, 
Even though the circle cuts it off, th this would not be that bad. Yeah, there we go. Of the pictures. This is beautiful. You don't have to use photo there for this. You just want to keep collaging in that paper. Your job. You don't have to use photographs. You just use. Colored paper to convey feeling. So you know what? You pull out your own drawings on it. Very powerful drawing. It's a little bit. What? No, no, no. This is great. Mm -hmm. That's the way we draw it down. Well, at least you might end up having to cut a part. So I don't know where it would fit. It'd be like here, but then you'd have to cut this. Are you going to put your spine in? So, Jen, oh, you, I want you to school You want to pull this together, and then where's the other one? Okay, okay. I didn't bring the pencil. Okay, I'm going to have two other things. They're soft pastels. <laughs> Or colored paper. There you go. You could put the colored paper down first. Folks at home, you creating? You good, Robin? You need to share? You're muted. I. Okay. You good? I'm just spending this time drawing a picture for my dentist, who's from Russia, and he's a lovely man. And I said I would do a painting, and he wanted me to do uh, a painting of the um, those amazing buildings in the square in in Moscow. So I just started drawing it, and it's I can't. I don't know if you can see it, but and I'm going to watercolor it. Wow. This is the, yeah, those are, the, they're actually buildings like that in a square. And of course, these are not realistic exactly the way I'm doing it. But I just wanted to use the time because I'm inspired when we have class and I wasn't going to get this done. So I have to go see him. So I wanted oh. to bring the painting. <laughs> That'll ease the pain. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Well done. I like your composition. 
I can't wait to see the colors. Yeah, I like how it fills the page. Awesome. Oh, I think Stephanie must have had to go home because she was not well. I had to go off. Oh, thank you, Natalie. Yeah, anyone who has a desire to share or has questions. Yeah, Stephanie went home oh, or went to bed, I hope. And those of you from Hoboken, I made an announcement earlier, I think you weren't here yet. If you have questions about the water advisory, about whether or not to drink the water or whatever, if you go to the CDC website, it will explain everything. Oh, 
comes to dominating players, you can make whatever you want. What is the end robots? Ah, uh, folks at home, you're good, right? You miss out on the fun we're having here. I always feel, wish you were here. Oh, Natalie, thank you for putting in the info about the Harriet Tubman murals. In the chat. It's in the chat. And I'm going to look at who's the artist for next week. Um, this is March. Get everybody psyched. Is it not coming up? It's breaking. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm not going to do this now then. Very boring. I don't have my idea. It's a little cement. Thank you. 
That's where I, I, I want to. Everyone at home, Groovy? Yep, looking good. Lizzie, you good? I'm good. This does not come naturally to me. I know, you said that last week. I know, I'm sorry, but I never well, I tried this stuff. But then it starts making me think about. Lizzie, listen up. Mm. Do not apologize. New things are difficult for everyone. So I'm impressed that you're trying. Well, it's kind of like not having the skill, say, for this project, but also not really like trying to think of the idea at the same time. Mm. Right. It is a, a difficult conceptual theme and you don't have the skills or the experience, you are learning. Mm. So you need to be patient with yourself. Mm. Did you, did yeah, you I don't mean to whine. I'm just expressing no, the challenge. I don't think you're whining. 
Mm. I'm just saying. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> there's no need to apologize. No, yeah. look, I'm the queen of whiners. You are not. <laughs> you're not whining. Well, right. I'm trying to find the method. That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> That's what art is all about. It's mm. diving That's why in I found that and video very interesting. Okay, that good. You just showed. Thank you. You could hear her method. Yeah. She she said, like an actor, she's very deliberate. She does a lot of research mm. before she begins. She thinks hard about what she wants to do. She's an artist who plans ahead. Not all mm. artists work that way. Everybody's different. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a learning experience. <laughs> and... I congratulate you on trying. It's awesome. Thanks. Thank you for uh, encouragement. <laughs> You're welcome. It's my job. I'm trying to find out the artist for next week, so I can't remember. I'm coming in a second. All right, our artist for next class uh, is not currently alive. Her name is Lee Bontecu. Actually, she, I think, died fairly recently. You're gonna love her work, everybody. She um, was an installation sculptor and printmaker. We're going to do primarily painting next week using non traditional materials. Lee Bontecu, I'm going to put her name in the chat box for everyone. And she was a big influence on a lot of male sculptors. Our artist for next week is Lee Bontrepu. Approximate what it might look like and then find it and purchase a piece of paper big enough. I did not cut the white piece of paper because 
you have a lot of large Then I had a friend frame a big at all one window. I just want to show something like this is not just a reason for that reason. And this is the image. This is And I'm not in this. If you want to cut out, they, they might work. But here's very, very, you know, nasty. Right here was this cover. This is what kind of you fit this way. This is the cover. I just don't know why it's there. It didn't fly with the fact that this belongs to the member of the group. Who is the person? Who is the 
We have so many strong shapes and images, though, that the light is not very strong. So I'm not sure you have to put it. Yeah, you have just a lot going on. I want to cover some of this stuff. Something. I don't know what. <laughs> You might want to step back and look at it from the perspective or you make the next step. Because you are definitely at a crossroads. That's just I don't know why you're laughing. Um, oops, we have five minutes. Pretty no. much. Go clean up. How did that happen? No. Uh, raise your hand if you want to share. Those who are here. Not a single person wants to share. Okay, then maybe ten minutes. If we don't share, we have ten minutes. So clean up. What? Let's see about people at home. Anyone at home need to share? Susan is MIA. Where are you, Susan? You're there. Woo, look at Susan's. All right, we're going to share Susan's. Yay. It's a Frida. Wow. It's a yes. Frida. Yay. Yes. Oh, she has had a great impact uh, on my art, in my art, in my life, you know, reading about her. I was into her many years before she became really popular. So there Love will be how more. She's kind of shooting off the corner of the page like that. Great. <laughs> can't yeah, wait. Be... To... Yeah, I know. I know you're going to put more stuff. I can't wait oh. to see. Oh, yes. There'll be a heart. There'll be some anatomy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Love it. You know how she loved dogs? Yes. Little Mexican dogs. I They're a particular species, but I forget the name. Uh, those, those, they start with an X, X, Y. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, I'll let you know when I'll send you a JPEG when it's done. Thank you. Thank you.
Robin, did you want to show what progress you've made? Um, I unmuted. I don't know. Anyway, I've just started the colors. Gorgeous. There's going to be a lot of green with a lot of orange and red. And the buildings are really wild. It's in the middle of Moscow, apparently. Are so. you are you using your imagination or are those colors you're seeing in a photograph? No, they're in a photograph. They're actually like that, more or less. Yeah. But of course, it's my drawing is not precise. It's it's more just a gesture of the building. So it's beautiful. Yeah. We love your oh, style. Look okay. We love your Thank style you. and you are our color queen. You do color beautifully. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. He better okay. like it. He better like it or you send him to me. It's okay. Beautiful, beautiful, Robin. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Lizzie, you want to show us? Uh, I really don't have anything to show. Okay. <laughs> but I'm working yeah. on it. But those next other ones are beautiful. I love the colors and everything. You can always show next week or send me a JPEG. Okay. Concha. Oh, no, don't say it out loud. I forgot we're, we're videotaping.
I would think that somehow they'd be getting together. Yeah, it's really But that edition is, is magic. Yeah. 
this is from Iron Man's back. The runners? Oh, this is Michelangelo. A lot of foot paintings. It's incredible. One is more horrifying than the other. Guys, we have to clean up. Sorry. <laughs> Next week, we have lots of Don't think that uh, we're going to have a model. Pretty sure we're not. Oh, Judy, I like the framing that you did. The dark blue. What more do you like that? Liz, you can take the balance of the no, it's not. It's like this time. It's this time. Oh, wow. at home. Send me JPEGs, everybody.
keep working. If you're at home, you have the luxury of continuing with your project. You do not have to stop. Oh, Lizzie's left and Robin. Susan, you are the last man standing. <laughs> Bring me your piece next Tuesday, Susan, please. I want to see it. Maybe we'll do Frida, a celebration of Frida at one of our multi center classes. We do her a lot, though, I have to say. I was actually thinking of doing a Georgia session. Okay. We haven't done Georgia in a while. Yes. Georgia, yes, Georgia, yes. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> if I'm in a Georgia state of mind. Okay. I couldn't resist. <laughs> all right, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Great job today. As always, thank you, Liz. <sighs> what, Susan? I said, as always, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And March is special because it's your birthday. Well, thank <laughs> you for waiting till the recording was over. To <laughs> See you soon.